Since 2002, Empowerment Resources, Inc., a nonprofit organization, has empowered more than 1,500 youth and adults in Duval and surrounding counties. Through its programs, Journey into Womanhood, Girls Mentoring, Life Skills for Teens, and Parenting Education Coaching. To get involved with programs, volunteer, or donate, visit www.empowermentresourcesinc.org. Follow us on social media, facebook.com forward slash empowerment.resources and instagram.com forward slash empowermentjax. Now you can live in Texas and not have a good red meat blend. Texas Cowboy Dust is designed for steak and other red meats. It's out to be my most popular spice blend, made with onions, peppers, ground mushrooms, pink salt, and other spices. Texas Cowboy Dust also goes great with chicken, pork, vegetables, and has a restaurant quality sheen to gravies and sauces. It's like a loot machine. Vanilla smoked sea salt seasoning is for seafood. The tarragon and fennel bring out the natural sweetness in seafood. I also use it in rice dishes, on yams, asparagus, blueberry pancakes, and believe it or not, chocolate chip cookies. Vanilla smoked sea salt adds a salty and savory component to sweet dishes that create a symphony for the tongue. Have you had your Earthblend coffee today? At Earthblend Coffee, we take pride in offering you the very best of beans across the world, blended and roasted to perfection, giving you superior quality and satisfying and flavorful taste. Experience the world in one cup with Earthblend Coffee. It was a, a monumental game for a and and Tampa. It was a monumental game. Somebody had to lose, and thank God it was them this time. We knew it was going to be a battle. Look at Jake Avis' record. 202 and 36, I think, some, some un, off the wall figures. And nobody would play him because they didn't want to take a chance of getting beat. But the truth of it is, over 46,000 tickets. Blacks were sitting on in, in the East Stands. The whites were sitting in the West Stands. And the score wound up 34-28. Uh, the only thing we proved that uh, we weren't inferior, that we were not inferior, and we were not afraid. For one night, for 160 minutes, we were better than them. Yeah. I love my HBCU uh, and boy, boy, I love it, love it. Yeah. I love it, love it. Yeah, yeah. I love my HBCU yeah. and man, yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah, man. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I hope my team they won one. Yeah. I tune into the HCCU Sports Lab to see if my team won a loss. If they lost, I'm quiet as a mouse. But if they won, keep tab. Uh, I'ma do the dab, yeah. Dr. Cavill, he know what he be talking about. Mike and Charles, they know what they be talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they won a loss, yeah. And who the ball, who the ball. So listen to Professor, yes sir, yes sir. And pay, a pay attention to the professor. <laughs> this is Dr. <laughs> D with Inside the HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington, Charles Bishop. Welcome to episode 114 on Inside the HBC Sports Lab radio show with the professors and yes, the show that is covering the sporting HBCU diaspora, all things HBCU sports from institutions large and small. From NAIA to the NCAA, we share insights and information on the HBC sports culture, HBCU athletic aesthetics, the support of HBCU athletic programs in the business of HBCU sports. I'm your host, Dr. Kenyatta Caville, along with my co-host, the professors, my yes, wife, Charles Bishop. We are filming from our home studio and sending a signal live to our KSOH 230 AM studios with Texas Radio Hall of Famer, Ralph Cooper in the beautiful home of Texas Southern University from the Houston, Texas. Boy, I guess we can shout right into it and get to it. Uh, congratulations to Texas Southern University men's basketball program for getting yeah. it done on Saturday. Yeah, they did yeah. all right. 
<laughs> yeah, congratulations to Texas Southern. They got it done. Yeah, they, they got it done. They came out with a vengeance for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Slivery's not dead. So let's shout out to the Jackson State yeah. uh, women's basketball program for getting it done. Another classic game uh, in regards to defeating Alabama State. And then obviously you go up to the MIAC and you had another classic game between North Carolina AT and Howard. AT gets it done in that matchup as they get to exit out the conference with a trophy uh, in terms of the, the last one in this current configuration. Uh, and then on to the men's side, you had Norfolk State representing. Both teams will play on Thursday for the NCAA opening round, the first four, as they like to call it. Just make sure we're using terminology so people don't know that we do know what we're talking about. So that's the terminology we use. And today's episode of Inside the HBC Sports Lab is sponsored by THG Agency, LLC. THG Agency is a company that provides sporting and educational consulting and data analytics and we're going to push a little bit on the business side of this, the sporting uh, side of this, as we traditionally give you updates. You'll get some updates in the second half of the show. But we're going to go a little bit on the business side, and we're going to get into this LeBron James branded Nike College Sports Apparel that FAMU, HBCU, is the first collegiate program to kick off. And it's an HBCU that's big. Before I ask you some news of the day, if you would, let me get a shout out for some of those that are dedicated to showing up regularly, giving us much love in terms of what we got on here. Ricky Burton, tough season, but still bleeding black and gold. Graham fam, no doubt about it. Alan Malone, PV versus a and Yes, we're just getting that breaking news. Yes. We'll get a little deeper in terms of uh, how that affects things and people's thoughts on that. Um, and, and how it may affect some momentum if you're talking about Prairie View and a and who's now going to have to stop for their second consecutive week. One was playing, and this one not. K. Johnson says, good evening inside the sports lab. Time for the lecture. 104, yes, 114 is in the house. Hey. The, why is the PBM game canceled? We'll give you that note. Uh, you know it has to be done to COVID as the people have shared with you. Christopher Madera, Belinda Johnson, uh, checking us out. Chuck Hunt is always in the house, giving us much love. Lonnie Shaw. Uh, yeah, we're going to shout out. I think that's some of the first news we're going to get out of here, Delana Shaw. You know we weren't going to leave you dead. National championship, that's going to lead off the show other than other items that I had to talk about there. You know, that's the big news of the day. Jerome G. Sutton, Alan Malone, George Walker, uh, B.J. Jones is in the house. What's up, fellas? Yeah, he guessed. Y'all can catch B.J. Jones every Sunday with us when we do our special breakdown of football. You can't do it anybody else better than B.J. Jones on the stage with us. Shout out to him. Brother By- Byron uh, got the air, got the airs in the house, representing fam you to the final former president of the Alpha 8 Atlanta National Alumni Association. James Knox uh, in the house. Chris Karen Griffin, excuse me. Willie Alex Hine, watch every swag tournament game. Yeah, that was nice to be able to do that. That was nice. Ron Fry is in the house. Him and Frazier, and we'll keep them coming. We'll make sure we shout you out, hopefully, through Senator out. Frazier. So- for the end of the show, Senator Frazier is giving us that love again. Boy, I tell you, it's nice when you got a senator to the yeah, I know, right? But for something right. But I want y'all to check out a little bit here. Yeah, y'all wasn't ready before the show. I thought y'all noticed it. I got a little something here in my little oh, we saw it. In, the, in the shirt there. But you know, I'm gonna make sure the brothers have something here just for the folks and check it out. Oh this wow. Oh, wow. And for my gentlemen, you know, make sure you can see that real close. Oh, that's dope. That's dope. I see, like see, that. See, like see, that. see, now you're just showing out. <laughs> yep, 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 yep. So uh, got a couple of colors for y'all in terms of what's going on there. So just the make old sure white Washington visor, huh? Yeah, yeah. So then you got to make sure that you represent. Oh, my goodness. There you go. I- Nice. Yeah. There you go. You're going to get it. You get it. And I got y'all the polo shirt. I got you the polo shirt. I want to make sure my professors, the co host with me, my co host look good. So I got you your own shirt. You got one that looks like this, black with the gold. You know, we're going to have to represent for that. And then I got you one, Mike, that's purple with the gold stripe. And we're not going to leave Charles Bishop out. He represents 
and they doing so well, like right now. I just had to make sure I show them some. So he has a navy blue one uh, that represents for Jackson State. So you got two shirts coming. So all y'all out there, get ready because we're gonna start having more paraphernalia with the signature Cabell line coming in regards to um, t-shirts. Uh, you'll get a little bit of different looks. We'll have some with the cartoon look representing the show. You have a general shirt with the logo. So over the next couple of weeks, you'll see it's going to be coming fast and furious. So get on board. I got some caps as well. So um, uh, we'll see what we can do to make sure you get that. But before we go any further, let's get into some of that news of the day. Charles, give us the breakdown. a &T, what did they get done? What is it? Well, let's talk a little a and track and field as they send a message with the national title. Uh, North Carolina A&T men's indoor track and field uh, star Trevor Stewart. I tell you what, A&T, they got it done as um, uh, they went out and, and, and got it done in the NCAA Indoor National Championships, especially in the four by 400 relay to give the men's program its first ever national championship. So Trevor Stewart, Randolph Ross Jr., Elijah Young, and Daniel Stokes won the NCAA Indoor National Championship in the 4x400-meter relay to give the men's program indoor or outdoor their first ever national championship as a 4x400 team. Uh, they ran a 303.16, the fifth fastest time in NCAA history to outlast University of Kentucky. The Aggies are the first HBCU to win an NCAA indoor title in the 4x400 since Morgan State. One in back-to-back -back years in 1965 and 1966, Dr. Bill. Yeah, that was beautiful. Did you see him go get him? I did. I did. He walked back down. Talking about everybody else. And then I said, well, a &T, you know, it's third day. Well, a &T is second. Well, yeah, yeah, a and finna go get him. That <laughs> was what you call a hawk. He hawked him. And uh, got so him. Up there. It, was, it was good. Got him, got Let him. me give a shout-out to uh, Thomas. White Jr., he's the one that uh, is facilitating this. He's the owner of Mogul Thread, so I'm partnering with him to come out with the signature line, a line with the Mogul Thread. So uh, shout out to him. I'm really excited. I got this really before the show, so, you know, I couldn't wait to put it on and show out for everybody. So you know I'm smiling. So if you catch that extra smile, just, you know, call it to my heart. Let me go to Mike. What else you got for us, Mike? Well, it's official. We've heard it kind of. Off and on, but uh, GCAC, the Gulf Coast Athletic Conference, is pleased to welcome Fisk University Bulldogs to the GCAC, effective this coming fall season. Returning to the GA GCAC allows Fisk University to rekindle relations with, the, with historic rivals and to compete with like-minded institu uh, institutions. That, according to University President, Dr. Van uh, Newkirk and uh, New Cummings in the GCAC. Fisk was founded in 1886 as a private HBCU located in Nashville, Tennessee, and had previously spent time in the uh, GCAC from 2010 to 2014 before going independent. So now they're, at, you know, for, a lot, <laughs> for lack of better words, they are back home. Congratulations to the Fisk University Bulldogs. No doubt about it. Congratulations, GCAC, because, um, you know, people get a little nervous. They had a couple of teams, uh, Xavier being one that stepped out and said they were moving over to the Red River Athletic Conference. Um, then you had, what is it, uh, Talladega, uh, Talladega also moving out. Now you got Fisk, so that's really big for them to make sure they – hold squared so they can continue to get that automatic bid. And they're representing in the tournament um, as they get get going. It looks like Stillman is, is going to get a chance to make a run as they're heading to Kansas City, so that's going to be interesting to watch. But the big news of the day, it always seems to find a way is football, right? Football. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Let me just read the presser from the SWAC office so you can get it directly from them. Prairie View A&M pauses football activity. Um, yeah. Um, Alabama, you have Andrew Roberts, assistant commissioner for the media relations, sent out a message that says the football game scheduled between Prairie View A&M and Alabama A&M, along with Prairie View A&M and Jackson State, slated to be played on Saturday, March the 20th and Sunday, March the 28th, respectively, have been postponed due to a COVID-19 related issue 
the sub subsequent quarantining of student athletes among PVAMU program. This action follows the guidelines and protocols set by the league and its COVID-19 advisory committee. Make updates for this game have not been determined at this time. And you're running close on the dates. I think you got one date squarely open for one of those matchups, but I'm not sure in terms of two of them what you could do. And unlike basketball where you can play several games in a week to try to catch up, um, that's not very likely for football. So it's going to be fascinating to see all how all this shakes out. And these two games were going to be pivotal games in terms yeah. Um, Absolutely. The showdown with the swag. First with Alabama AM. Alabama AM is ranked in my top five. I won't spoil it for you where they are ranked. Last couple of weeks, they've been ranked number one. They may stay number one, or do we have a new number one? We'll have to see. But with that being said, they were top five program going up against Prairie View, a top five program that was previously ranked three. So you know you're going to have more than likely a top three matchup between these two programs. And then the following week, you had Jackson State in Prairie View. Jackson State last week in the last couple of weeks is ranked rank number two. So that was a 2-3 matchup. So it's going to be interesting to see how all this falls out. Uh, what does it mean for the other programs? Arkansas Pine Bluff has one eye out there looking as they're undefeated currently in conference race. They take on a big matchup against Gramlin that we can get into a little bit in the second part of the show after this interview, but, man, it's a lot going on. Let me go straight to Charles uh, and see what are your thoughts in terms of this announcement. Yeah, a uh, huge announcement because I was really looking forward to uh, the matchup with Prairie View and uh, Alabama a &M. You're talking about uh, one of the top quarterbacks in the SWAC and Aquil Glass and uh, going up against one of the top defenses and definitely uh, one of the top uh, defensive linemen in Story Jackson. So that was going to be a fascinating uh, matchup, uh, Alabama a &M's. Uh, left tackle trying to protect Aquil Glass's blind side because <laughs> Story Jackson is a force to be reckoned with. He's one of the top uh, uh, defensive players in all of FCS. So I uh, hate to see this happen, but you know it's for the protection of the student athletes and things of that nature. But I uh, was really looking forward to that game this weekend. No doubt about it. Great points. Let me go to Mike. What are your thoughts on this? This is after a big victory defensive a uh, statement made by Prairie View against Gramlin three years in a row in the uh, State Fair Classic. What are your thoughts in terms of this announcement? It is big. Uh, oh, same same thing. I was really looking forward to this matchup. You know, you you know how can a Quill Glass and, and that offense do against this defensive front against Prairie View? Uh, you, you you heard Charles mention uh, Story Jackson. Uh, who's averaging 17 tackles a game thus far to this point is, is a player, I think a player of the week. So you wondered how they did. The question that I, that I ask is, what does it do for either team's momentum going forward? You know, what does it do for the psyche of either team going forward? Or does it think, um, you know, both teams come in riding on a wave uh, of, 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 of really impressive wins one closer than the other. So you wonder, you know, with this news, unlike basketball, which is a little bit more fluid, as you mentioned, Dr. Gaville, is a little bit more fluid. You can kind of recover, but this one, you got to wait a couple of weeks before that. So what does it do for momentum? How to play, what do players do with football to try to maintain that momentum and try to, you know, try to be pre prepare themselves for such a tremendous matchup? Yeah, great point when you talk about what's going on there. And, uh, man, this is a stunner when you get into it, but this is the age of COVID-19. Um, you know, may, many people think the vaccination and the things that are going on, uh, of what's going on there, except for uh, just missing out on so much with that. But let me go back to uh, Charles a little bit in terms of just how do you move forward if you pray of you uh, before we start touching on some more news there? Well, I, I mean, uh, obviously you, you try to – uh, continue a uh, business as usual as much as you can. Uh, you, you go through the, the protocols and things of that nature, but uh, you, you try to uh, instill that mindset that, you know, once you get back that you're, you're right back to business as usual. So uh, hopefully a uh, Prairie View and Alabama a and can, can bounce back from uh, uh, having this off week, if you, if you will. And uh, you never know, uh, it might be a blessing in the skies or uh, whatever players that might have some nicks and bruises that get an opportunity to kind of heal up a little bit 
and, uh, you know, you press forward. As we've seen uh, throughout this whole basketball season, yeah. uh, somehow, some way, teams have continued to press forward. Yeah, with that, I think that's fascinating in terms of what that looks like in so many different ways when you just talk about the dynamics that are going on there. Uh, fascinating. Um, and it continues to be a, a statement. You know, a lot of folks are in a lot of states are talking about taking off the mask. Um, you're talking about uh, baseball season underway uh, in terms of college. You know, how is that going to focus everything there? And in regards to what we're talking about baseball, we have some baseball scores. I thought it was a little bit of an upset. Uh, people may have thought differently, but baseball took two – I mean, Pine Bluff took two or three. From Texas. From yeah. Texas Southern. Yep. Uh, weekend. So I thought that was fascinating. And then you get Jackson State getting that uh, sweep of all points, including uh, a game when you gave me the upset. It was 30 to six in the final there. And at the time, it was 30 to nothing, Jackson State. And I was like, man, if they score this touchdown and Valley got that turnover and looked like it was score, I said, don't let them miss the, the extra point. I was like, man, uh, it looks like Jackson State was looking at 30 to 6, 30 to 7, both on baseball diamond and football field. I was like, that's just crazy when you talk about the baseball team putting out 30 points. I was like, are you texting me the uh, football score or is that the baseball score? You said, no, that's the baseball score. <laughs> wow. So that was pretty amazing in terms of what's going on there. And then, obviously, Prairie View continues to struggle uh, as they uh, get swept uh, by Southern in a lot of ways. So that's some of your baseball updates in terms of what's going on there. I, th I, think, I think also you that swag volleyball is picking up. You have two teams that are coming out head and shoulders. You got Jackson State on like a three- or four-game winning streak. And then you got Prairie View on a four- or five-game winning streak. Now Jackson State owns the head-to-head -head matchup. But both teams are playing well, so that volleyball matchup is looking really well as we come, you know, to the to the downside of the season. Oh, and shout out to Jackson State tennis. They broke Alabama State's yeah. 39 match uh, win streak this past weekend. So uh, Ashley Robinson is living a good life over there at Jackson State right now. <laughs> volleyball, tennis, baseball team, nine game uh, conference winning streak, three straight uh, co uh, conference sweeps. I mean. Undefeated in conference play, baseball, and then football team doing well. It's a good time over there at Jackson State right now. Well, not so fast, my friend. The, the Lady Panthers bowling team, they're coming on the SWAC Bowling Championship March 19th to the 21st. Watch out for the Lady Panthers. They're coming with it. <laughs> oh, no, I like I like that. Y'all so bad all over there. Y'all going to go back all show long? <laughs> 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 I think we got our first guest ready to jump on. So let's get to the uh, VP and director of athletics with Courtney Gauthier. Because we're going to get in a little bit of, about this LeBron James deal. As we're bringing him in, let's show him a, a treat. Go ahead for our producer, Roy. Play the video. That's a nice video you got going on there. Impressive. I, I, I know y'all like to say y'all brag a little different in those parts. And so, we do, we do, we do. <laughs> I'm having to watch it on my handheld, but it's impressive. No, no doubt. It's good to have uh, Brother Courtney Gauthier for everybody. That's the Vice President and Director of Athletics of FAMU, Florida A&M University. And he had, he's living a good life right now, too. First, shout-outs to the baseball program as uh, they were part of the Atlanta Braves hosting an inaugural weekend series between historically black colleges and universities. Uh, baseball programs that they honored, the Braves Hall of Famers and HBCU gra graduates and Ralph Carr, Grandma State University and Bill Lucas, Florida A&M, HBCU Baseball Classic presented by Truist. The Rattlers swept the Tigers uh, in this three-game series to, to make a statement on the gridiron as they Prepare to get into the swag action. I guess that's the way that you want to kind of do it when you're coming into it. But what we have, Courtney, here today to talk about, to me, is a big deal. And, and I want to 
I always like to talk about the business side of athletics. So. Quote, FAMU is an elite institution with a rich tradition of first, and our student athletes deserve a student athlete experience that is second to none. As we transition into a new athletic conference and the opportunity to engage a pair of partners, the 23-year relationship with Nike and their commitment to culture, diversity, inclusion, and innovation has never been clearer, end quote, said Vice President and Director of Athletics, Courtney Gauthier. Welcome back, and again, congratulations. How did this come about? <laughs> well, you know, I, I'll say this, uh, and we do brag different for the record, so we're going to brag a little bit after we talk. But uh, but uh, <laughs> but we'll, but we'll rewind. Uh, you know, it's, it's good to see everybody, and I will tell uh, all of my friends in the SWAC uh, as our baseball team this weekend uh, swept. Get used to that. Uh, that, uh, that uh, oh, uh, here we uh, go. <laughs> we, just, we just wanted to give you a, a little bit of dose of it, uh, but I will say this, my good friend, Ashley Robinson, uh, kudos um, as you as you talk of, about these times in our country and in our, in our industry, leadership matters. Um, mm -hmm. It is really important. And there are a lot of uh, black athletic directors um, at HBCUs really changing the game. Uh, commend Ashley, commend Dr. Ed Scott at, at uh, Morgan State, um, you name it. Uh, you know, there, there are really some innovative um, and progressive athletic directors moving the needle. Um, but to that point, um, you know, again, we, we had the opportunity, you know, to engage apparel partners. Um, I'm progressive. You know, we like to push the needle. And uh, we were really making some significant strides and really moved in a direction uh, that we were going to Adidas. Um, and, uh, you know, even with that deal, we, it was going to be transformational for us and, and definitely, uh, raise the stakes for, for all HBCUs. Um, but the 23 year relationship with, with Nike and Florida A&M, um, just kind of right before, you know, deal was done, um, you know, get a phone call from some of my contacts and said, Hey, you know, we, we, we want to have a deeper conversation. Uh, you know, we, we see what you guys are doing at Florida A&M. Um, wow. You know, we, we recognize it. it, it the, we, we, we realize the brand power that you have. And you might want to hear kind of how we can really do some things to be special. Um, and so literally, uh, this was a couple of days before Christmas, you know, and, um, and that conversation was had. And, uh, and so we, we talked about casting a big vision. I wanted to make sure that this, that this deal was a blueprint uh, for all of intercollegiate athletics, not just HBCUs, uh, but to raise the stakes. Uh, because in our research, the average value of a uh, historical black college universities apparel deal was only $125,000. So um, in layman's term, it was chump change. And those days are over. And so for us, um, you know, everybody wants to talk about, well, we, we want to be diverse, you know, and, and, and inclusive. Um, you know, we, we want to support, you know, our minority serving institutions. Okay, put your money where your mouth is, right? Um, and not only do that, put us on a platform that quite frankly, we've never been before. Mm. And so these were the conversations. Uh, they were blunt, they were straightforward. Um, and as our, our previous president has said, um, what do you have to lose, right? And, and so that was our approach uh, in our negotiations with um, all, all of our apparel companies, but um, the ability for us, for them to come back to the table, uh, LeBron James uh, had identified us as an institution that, that he wanted to support, uh, the opportunity presented itself to do so, um, and obviously, you know, the, the rest is history, but the significance of this deal, not only the, the economics and what it's done because it's, it's disrupted the industry. You know, right now in a pandemic, there's no apparel companies really giving out deals that, are, that, that, that yield the type of benefits that this one will, but it, it's, it's, it's different for many reasons. Um, mm -hmm. it, it's an investment into the institution to ensure that our student athletes are going to be successful. Um, it has a retail component to it um, that is unheard of um, in, in all of intercollegiate athletics. 
but the icing on the top is the relationship uh, that that our institution will have with LeBron James, who is um, the best athlete of, of our time. And, um, you know, and obviously, you know, there's a lot of conversations going on. There's some other elements to it. Nike will also leverage some of their other assets, such as Travis Scott and, and uh, some of their other student, or excuse me, some of their other athletes uh, to support our initiatives. Um, but the goal and the mission is that Florida A&M is now the blueprint. You know, you want to talk about culture. You want to talk about diversity. You want to talk about being able to place minorities uh, in high level positions, um, being able to do that and use this agreement to, to kind of lift up an institution and provide opportunities that, quite frankly, we wouldn't have had before. And so um, that, that's kind of how the, the deal got cemented. Um, and I'll, I'll be honest with you, um, there were probably about three people um, in Tallahassee that knew it was happening. Uh, and, and I told to, uh, two of them, I said, you know, if you say anything about it, I'm coming for you. <laughs> so that was my deputy athletic director, uh, my associate athletic director, Michael Johnson. Uh, they were behind the rollout, the, the videos that you mentioned, the branding, uh, the execution uh, with LeBron's team, with Nike, all of the back of house type of things. Uh, and then my university president. So those were the only three people that knew on, on our side that this thing was happening for, for a number of reasons. Um, but again, you know, we're really excited about what this does, not only for Florida A&M, but for all of us, um, you know, as, as we talk about what the, what the standards are now and pushing uh, these companies, these are multi-billion dollar companies. Um, and it's about time that they stepped up to the plate. And, um, you know, there's a lot of us who buy shoes um, and it's about time that we start investing back into the institutions that support us. Mm. Well said. Well <clears throat> said. Wow. I remember yeah. um, checking on you for Christmas and you were saying that it, you know, it was really good. I didn't realize it was about to be that good. So I, I <laughs> talking about. Uh, before I pass the mic, um, we're right up against it. We'll take a break. But I did want to ask one follow-up question before we go into the break and then come back and let uh, Mike and Charles ask a couple of follow-up questions. How much of your experience of seeing other contract negotiations, your personal experience as you talked about growing up and parents understanding the HBCU culture and the ability to navigate this space in such a way that you see um, the value of what apparel deals are out there I mean, even in your experience, obviously, at Middle Tennessee, at an FBS level, but what they bring to the table in terms of attractiveness, attendance, and all those things, brand value versus FBS, but also understanding unique brand value, although it's FCS in terms of HBCU, and one of the biggest, I'm sure you, in your mind, the best brand out there in terms of the HBCU. How did that codify itself when you're saying, all right, how do I radically change and put this at the table, particularly at the time that we have right now? So, you know, I would say this. Um, all brands are not equal, um, it did, you know, just to be frank in that. Um, but we understood that we have a unique one. Um, and we, quite frankly, we, we knew that our brand was strong that it was powerful, that a lot of people identified, but this was a true litmus test of, of just understanding how mm. much it was. Um, and, um, you know, people talk about Dr. Humphreys, who was a legendary president at, at Florida a and and, you know, his influence and how much business acumen he had. And I never heard, uh, I remember hearing somebody say he walked into a Fortune 500 company and he told the CEO what they were going to do for Florida a and And they did. And, those days to some degree have to come back. Um, you know, what we produce um, for this country, what we produce, uh, what we have produced to the sports industry. Um, you know, I, I told the Nike executives, there would be no Serena Williams if it wasn't for an Althea Gibson. You know, so let, let, let's, let's, let's take it back a little bit. You know, college football would not be what it is today if it wasn't for Jake Gaither. Um, and so, uh, when you realize that, and even in that same uh, research, uh, and this is one of the unique kind of tie-ins to LeBron, 
Um, the, the very first uh, Black Laker was a FAMU Rattler. Did not know that uh, until we started mm. doing some research. And so, you know, there are so many unique um, stories mm -hmm. that are untold, quite frankly, um, but, but they were the path. And so this was, again, just a unique opportunity to use those skills that, yeah, those opportunities that at Jacksonville State to negotiate apparel deals, Middle Tennessee, yes, they came into play because I know what a lot of my peers on the other side of the table are getting. And so uh, it's like I tell our staff, if you're not at the table, that means you're on the menu. And for so long, uh, especially in, in our HBCU paradigm, our athletic directors and our athletic programs haven't been at the table to get their just due. Um, and so this is transformational for our department, but we hope that the, the idea is that, again, it raises the, the level of awareness for all of us. Um, and this is just the beginning. I mean, we're gonna press the grain you know, if two HBCU conference champions get to the NCAA tournament, in my opinion, I, I'm not in agreement with playing games. You know, we need to be at the table, right? We're no different than 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 another FCS conference or, or something of that nature. And so now was the time to, to not only talk about the disparity, but challenge and, and put our cards on the table to raise all of the people that we interact with uh, their stakes in the equity game. Wow. Great point there. Uh, according to Yahoo Sports, as um, they stated, through a public records request, Portico obtained a copy of the deal, which is due to commence on July and permits Nike to provide 3.3 million worth of retail products to the university over the deal's duration. Won't ask you to talk specifics about that, but I wanted to put it out there so people at least have a general idea. And you compare that to a, um, Georgia State a couple of years ago that got a deal under Armour. They had a deal right above two million at the FBS level to give you some just general comparisons so you understand how transformational this is. And this is not even talking about some of the other significant items in there. They're not even dealing with um, financial uh, components of this. With that, we're going to take a quick break. I know it's a lot here. Please stay with us. We're going to carry on with the interview if we can get uh, convinced Courtney Gauche, uh, the Vice President Director of Athletics, to stay with us a little bit. And I certainly want to get my uh, colleagues in here, Mike and Charles, to be able to ask some follow-up questions. So stay right with us, Dr. Bill, inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop as we are interviewing the Vice President and Director of Athletics, Courtney Gauche of Florida A&M University. The Cuvée Group is a Florida-based marketing and training consulting firm. We help businesses communicate to their target audience and engage them in conversation. We also help to expand their audiences, which will ultimately result in growth for those organizations. In addition to being a certified constant contact specialist, my colleagues and I are also certified in John Maxwell Leadership Principles. We use these proven principles to conduct workshops, training, and private coaching sessions for individuals and companies looking to take things to the next level. Contact us to schedule a free consultation. Issues today, don't delay. Call Cuvay. Q time is up. Talking about, talking about. They compress the analytic data with your hip hop. If you know them like I know them, they gon' tell you if your team, if they want a lot, yeah. And who the ball, ball, ball. So listen to Professor Yes Sir and pay attention because he's going to teach a lesson. This is Dr. Bill with Inside HBC Sports Lab with Mike Washington and Charles Bishop as we're interviewing Vice President and Director of Athletics Courtney Gauthier, uh talking about the FAMU uh, new apparel deal that is changing the game, not just for HBCUs, but across the board, but it's certainly a significant HBCUs. since. There is this little game that's supposed to kick off Labor Day weekend in the greater Miami area between some university called Florida A&M University and this other university called Jackson State University out of the, what will be known as the Eastern Division of the 12 member, the new 12 member SWAC after July 1st, 2021. I'm going to let Charles Bishop jump in here and ask a follow up question uh, uh, to make sure you get his due. And I'm going to say then what I call the best for last. Uh, the Prairie A&M great over here. 
<laughs> Mike Washington. <laughs> Thank you, Dr. Gaville. Uh, let me let me ask this question, um, uh, Courtney, in, in terms of are HBCUs at the cornerstone of sports and entertainment? Are we starting to see a renaissance of athletes and entertainers meeting at HBCUs? Uh, I think you're going to see that. Um, the reality is, um, I think, you know, it's kind of the, the, the whole saying, you know, stay woke. The people are waking up, you know, um, because they realize that the motivations at, on the other side aren't genuine. Um, and, and not to say that, that, that they all are, are false, but we know that the, the experience uh, at an HBCU is holistic. You know, you may be a five-star student athlete, but we're also going to develop you to be a five-star young man or woman, in, in regardless if you have the professional athlete, uh, athletic ability or not. And what you're starting to see, and trust me, I've been on the other side. You don't get that holistic experience. You get, hey, you're a superior athlete. We're going to train you. We're going to get your body to top shape. You know, we're going to, for four years, you know, we're going to invest in you. Now, if you don't do your part, if you don't get a degree, or you don't set yourself up for that, or you're a bust to go to the next level, that's not our problem. We're, we're mm -hmm. done. Like, your eligibility, I've seen it. I've seen student athletes graduate with a with a liberal arts degree and uh, working at moving companies, you know, sure. after they're done, you know, because either, you know, misadvised or, or didn't have the right people in their corner. And at Florida A&M, not only do the same opportunities exist to go to the league if you're good enough, right, or to play in the NBA if you're good enough or play Major League Baseball, because we have alumni who are doing that. But you also can be a doctor, a lawyer an elite business person, a Fortune 500 CEO. Those are all, uh, again, just cliff notes of some of the great things that are happening at Florida a and That's the standard for our alum, is to be great, is to be you know first and best. And so that is the difference that I would say from, from my experience working at um, a, a majority institution and a historically black college and university, it, it's totally different. And so- <laughs> This deal in itself, and, and just to your point, this, this relationship between celebrity and historically black colleges, now it, it's routing the Mikey Williams, you know, the, the Bronnies, the, the kids who have, who are the one and dones, right? Who have, who are gonna be pro no matter where they go. It's allowing them to say, well, wait a minute, young people let's take a look at this because i can go be myself right you know yeah. i don't worry about looking over my shoulder or or somebody telling me to take you know take my do-rag off or maybe cut my dreads because i don't fit their profile um and so now again that that paradigm is starting to shift now what a lot of our alumni and donors and, and people who support these programs have to understand is you have to have processes and tools in place to support these young people when that does happen. Because the Mikey Williams of the world who has the ability to go make millions after their one year, they're gonna need medical people to rehab, right? You know, they're, they're gonna need to make sure that the tools are there for them to achieve those successes. And that is where, um, you know, again, I think the shift is or the difference is the disparity is is because that the majority of institutions they have that you know they've got the counselors they're going to make sure you eat they got the nutritionists they've got the medical people um and so for us part of the the equation in this deal we talked about innovation uh there's there's a cash segment into this deal mm -hmm. as an hbcu even though we are elite and we are uh the best hbcu in the land um, we are still a low resource institution. And so how do you close that gap? Okay, Nike, if you're committed, let's play, right? Let, 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 me, let me be able to leverage the celebrity and these that quite frankly, our demographic buys. Now, when these hit the market, there's a retail component. 
Florida A&M has a vested interest in Nike at this point, right? And so <laughs> the business model, the behind the scene things are what will truly change the game, right? Mm -hmm. And so that's the piece that's going to support scholarships and athletic trainers and, and the tools that these superior student athletes need. Um, and so I think that that's one of the things that, that we challenged. Um, and, and as we talked about innovation, it was how do we address these things that it may not be in year one, but holistically, we're addressing things that, that HBCUs have always been riddled in. Sure. We haven't had the support in these areas to get across the hump. Um, and quite frankly, you know, uh, as we enter the SWAC, our commissioner, Dr. Charles McClellan, uh, he's probably one of the most innovative leaders that I've interacted with. And oh. his plans for the SWAC five, 10 years down the line, um, you better look out some of these FBS conferences. It would not surprise me with, with the brands, the, uh, the, the football integrity that the league has, and quite frankly, and you're seeing it. We talked about Ashley in the in the solid program that he's running at Jackson State, like Dion or not, right? He he has he has raised the stakes um, in a lot of categories: media attention, publicity. Uh, you know, I don't agree with how he does it all the time, but what he says most of the time is right. Um, and so that's that's what we're talking about. Again, this deal, people are taking a closer look at these institutions now. Um, and so now we can go to marketplace with TV and say, no, we're not going to take what you're offering. We're going, this is what it's going to take to get us. Sure. Um, and we've been doing it for a long time. Uh, mm -hmm. Prime example, my first year I got appointed, I was, I was appointed athletic director at the Florida Classic. That was a Camping World Stadium in Orlando, Florida. If you rewind six months, University of Miami played University of Florida, same stadium had 58,000 people there. We played the Florida Classic, had 60,000 people there. The economic impact from FAMU and Bethune-Cookman playing that game in Orlando was $35 million that weekend. The Florida University of Miami was somewhere in the $27 million range. So those institutions both got $4 million payouts. So tell me what the difference is when we have the brand power, we have sure. economically, uh, you know, opportunities that are, that are, that rival power five institutions. Mm -hmm. um, and so to that point, those analytics, that data, if you're not at the table, you don't know. And so pushing the envelope and challenging and uplifting our other uh, HBCUs and ADs to do it because only together are we really going to be able to change the narrative. No doubt. Yeah. Great points you're making there. Appreciate getting into the details like that. Mike, yeah. please follow up with your question. Yeah. <clears throat> uh, Courtney, if you look at this deal, I mean, it's it's almost a try. You have the valuation of the product or the brand of FAMU. And if you're thinking about it from an NBA, NBA standpoint, you have the valuation of the LeBron James product, and then you have Nike. And in essence, this is almost a tri-merger. And part of this deal is you somehow we've negotiated to where two of the students will be selected from the program for summer internships as part of this deal. There's financial terms in it. So tell me, using your experiences from Middle Tennessee, you know, Middle Tennessee, from Jacksonville, and then now, you know, as the anchor, the quarterback, if you were writing a paper. What are three or four core principles you would recommend and, you know, expound on when putting something like this together for, you know, for other HBCUs? There has to be three or four core fundamentals, beliefs that you have that you've stood on when putting a deal, when you're anchoring a, a, such a tremendous deal like this uh, for FAMU. So I, I would say the first thing, um, be intentional. You know, and so my team, uh, I'm only as good as my team, right? And um, I challenged them to go back and bring the information, okay? I wanted to know, and we did, we, we found out what every FCS football program around the country, what, what their deals were, what the ranges were, you know, who was in the top five, who was in the, the lower brackets. And then I also 
one of the evaluation done of mid majors, you know, Georgia States, the Middle Tennessees of the world, et cetera, et cetera, to understand what what the marketplace will yield, right? So you, you got to know the marketplace. You can't just go half cocked and hey, this is what I want. They you know you, they might laugh you out of the room. And so uh, we we did an overlay, just understanding. You know, we we evaluated um, you know the Under Armour deal that that the Jacksons you know just did. And we knew that we, we certainly um, had to exceed that, you know, from a, from an overall value perspective. And then there's about 10% of things that what I would consider to be wish list items in a partnership. And uh, we got two of them, you know, two of the three things that we wished for, we got. Um, and one of them was the cash. Um, and the second one was, uh, again, kind of the, the surprise factor was the relationship with LeBron. Um, and there's two things that we value, um, and quite frankly, the press alone, uh, has generated millions of dollars of advertisement for our institution that quite frankly, we would have never been able to truly afford, um, you know, that press, that relationship, um, as you see, the bronze already rocking the gear, uh, we'll be excited to have him on campus. We'll be excited to launch some other partnerships. Uh, with him and his brands. Um, can't necessarily let the cat out of the bag just yet, but there are more things coming. And, um, you know, the sound bites that you've heard, uh, they're genuine. Uh, you know, he would truly be involved in our program. Uh, and fundamentally, even with basketball, again, imagine if you had a Fab Five at an HBCU, right? Yeah. You know, it only takes one time for it to happen. And so just imagine... Um, if that were to happen, uh, there's so many different opportunities that present themselves. Um, you talk about name, image, and likeness now, right? That's the next big thing in intercollegiate athletics, being prepared for that. But for student athletes who, you know, you may be choosing between Florida A&M and Georgia State, right? And from an academic perspective, we're, we're certainly better, you know? Um, and for us, when you start talking about that student athlete experience, you know, kids, young teenage kids, they, they like the shiny stuff. They want to know what they're getting. They want to know their experience. And now not only can you leverage uh, one of the brands of, of the premier athlete of our time, but to ensure that they're going to get things that no one else will, you know. And those are things that, that change the game. And so from a recruiting perspective, um, it's been off the chain for the past couple of weeks. I mean, it's <laughs> That's all right. I can, I can only imagine. Yeah. yeah. And, it's a great, yeah. great thing. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, again, it's, um, I think we're blessed and fortunate to be at the right place at the right time. Um, I think if you, a year ago, I don't know that this deal would have been uh, at this magnitude. Um, I think it would have happened um, maybe with lesser bells and whistles. Um, mm. you know, I think a year from now it would have been different, but um, so I think we, we hit at the right time. Uh, but as you talk about, you know, being able to leverage your rights, you know, this was one of the reasons why we left the MEAC. I'll be honest with you, you know, we didn't control these rights. And so that was very restrictive. We were in a conference deal where my values being tapered and, and, and leveled out so that all of my peers can get the equal amount. Well, as we said, um, all brands aren't equal. Um, and, and this is a true testament of that, but, um, you know, we're really just excited about what this is going to do for our program and our kids. Sounds like a lecture coming up. Uh, I, I heard a couple of things, knowing what you can leverage timing is important. Yeah. Um, so I, I heard a couple of core things. You, you, you can speak to the business groups. About Case study points. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. You, you see, I'm eating it up. You know, this is going to go right in the can for us to be able to uh, provide it to students to review and write an analysis in terms of what this looks like. Um, and yeah. so, so excited about that in terms of what this is going. And it makes a big point when you talk about brands are different, especially if you can't have the composite brand leverage and bring up not only the other brands, but the biggest brand. This has to be a force multiplier. Right. And when that's not happening, then it is when you have to start looking and doing things a little more differently, radically in regards to uh, just the business world. With that, I want to give you a chance to give um, a shout out, obviously, to the Rattlers out there. 
uh, as we um, getting up to the time here. But we're going to see if we can bring you back. We might even see what your schedule is uh, either next week or later this week to do the second part of this, because I know there's a lot more that you want to get into that we just didn't have time to share. So we'll see about arranging that. But uh, would definitely want to give you a chance to shout out to the Rally of Faith Rally. Well, we appreciate it. And anytime we can join uh, to share some of the great things happening, you know, we're going to take advantage of that. And, uh, you know, we've been watching some of these uh, – JV football games this spring. I think. Oh, here we <laughs> and, uh, but, but leave no doubt, leave no doubt, as the Rattlers say, uh, when we when we show up in Miami, uh, invite our friends from Jackson, we, we know whose gear will look better for sure. So uh, <laughs> <laughs> no point intended, but, uh, but I, I will say this, and, and I'm a good friend at, at Jackson State, I do think that that game on many levels is going to be a star-studded event. Um, that is going to put black college football in a place uh, that we couldn't have imagined uh, ever. And so uh, yeah. really excited about that opportunity. Um, if, if, if you love black college football and you're not in Miami, something's wrong. <laughs> something's wrong. He said, you saw that's your fault. <laughs> that's like, that's, that's on you. It ain't, it ain't because you didn't tell them. It's that's on you. No doubt. No doubt. Yeah, that, that's going to be exciting. Uh, I'm negotiating to see how I can make that space and make that happen because the, it's going to go down in so many different ways that people need to understand the magnitude of it. And sometimes things come once in a lifetime for yourself. You know, things continue to evaluate. And I told Charles many times before, when you get an opportunity to be in the place where things are changing the landscape, you need to be there so you can register. And as they kind of say in some of the world, kick, check that off the bucket list type of thing. And so, Absolutely. Sure. so really want to say thank you for your time and sharing the insights and going so deep into it. And like I said, we'll reach back out and see what's going on. More than that, just continue the great effort and the work that you're doing. Because I know uh, for many different ways, people question uh, both good and bad intentions in terms of that, both inside and out question uh, who you are, your motivations, and people don't always get a chance to take the deep dive in your resume, and it only can say so much. Uh, and so I just want to say personally, in the short time that we've gotten to talk, and people don't understand. We leveraged this before he even got to FAMU, and people may not understand that uh, I was pushing in the direction to look at some other institutions uh, that'll remain between us uh, uh, on that. Oh, it, it's between now about, people, it's, it's between a lot of other people now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just look at me. I ain't, ain't made no decision, but people gonna start seeing. It. <laughs> I tell you and make a recommendation. You might want to listen to Doctor Field. Hey, so, the price, just, the price tag just went know, up. <laughs> I say that on the real that you need to understand when I talk about what's going on. I'm talking about it from a research intensive effort in terms of doing the homework. It's no emotions. It's about understanding folks that you can have a conversation and it doesn't take very long to understand what they understand that can leverage and help any institution for that matter, uh, take it to the next level. And so when you talk about consulting and making recommendations, you can keep looking the other way, but you're going to find out that you're going to lose out because I'm serious about what I do, not on this show, but what I do in the classroom and what I do from a business perspective. Absolutely. I'll leave it there. Don't want to lecture myself too much more there, but want to say thank you, Courtney Gauthier, Brother Gauthier. Continue Appreciate the great work and we'll talk a little more. Continue to do what you do. Gotcha. 06. Yeah. 06. 06. <laughs> With that, I, I wanted to share a little more before we get out of here and just in terms of um, the yeah. asset that we're talking about. Um, again, according to Yahoo Sports, uh, for those that most of y'all probably have read this, but I think it's important for those that don't to point this out. Another notable part, and he kind of uh, teased this a little bit, is the range arrangement is the shoe company's commitment to enlist, quote, top tier Nike assets each year to promote FAMU. The proposal specifically mentions James, obviously LeBron James, rapper Travis Scott, tennis player Naomi Osaka as examples. We've seen what Travis Scott did with some HBC scholarships so that makes sense you've seen what osaka has done in terms of what she's doing and this is going to replicate because they're not going to when i say this i'm talking about athletes are not going to be want to be left out sure. and they don't be part of this too in terms of this and to compare this this is by contrast 
to let you know the difference between players understanding their brand and in the current model of what FBS power conferences brand as their coaches. By contrast, Nike's recent Jordan brand deal with UCLA assumes the opposite posture, obligating the Pac-12 school's coaches to be available for up to two personal promotional appearances on behalf of Nike. So there's a difference in terms of the brand evaluation that we talked about and who is purchasing based on that brand and how they do it. And we starting to understand it. The other thing that I want to share in here is Florida a and University's deal. And this is a breakdown from businessjournal.com out of Atlanta. Just to give you some frameworks, and this came out of the uh, MIAC uh, fans page that they have there. Um, and so I'm quoting from the poster that posted this there, which was brilliant in terms of what he brought there. Um, Florida a and University's deal with Nike spans eight years and pays out roughly eight million in gear and cash. It has definitely set the bar what HBCUs are worth, our brands, and gives other HBCUs such as NC, North Carolina a and Southern, Grambling, especially Jackson State, more bargaining power when negotiating their own deals, considering uh, the, the magnitude with Coach Prime and Under Armour, what all that, and we're still trying to figure out what that deal is, but imagine what that looks like and compare this. I always like to do comparisons. Georgia State, Georgia State previously had a deal with Nike, but agreed to a seven-year contract worth $2.7 million with Under Armour in 2016. The deal was part of a major rebranding push under athletic director Charlie Cobb. She became the first Division I school in Georgia to sign with the Baltimore-based apparel company. The deal doesn't include cash payouts, focusing more on the product. The school receiving an average of $392,000 worth of gear per year compared to what we told you earlier for FAMU. So understanding the brand, and I tell you all these things and how to compare the brand association with the level of what it means to operate at the FBS and FCS. So understanding where this conference can go and how that changes is significant and, and interesting there, for me. There, there, there's also one more. Nike spending 200000 each year in marketing support. In essence, that's basically an extra marketing division for your athletic department and so, mm. and, and so many terms, as well as providing 200000 to the uh, FAMU Athletic Fund. So that's 200000 for marketing, another 200000 to the athletic fund. That, I mean, that, that's significant. That is a tremendous deal. You look at how that deal leverages, who has the leveraging power in that and who benefits from that deal the most? I mean that. I mean, uh, whoever whoever comes behind that deal, that's who's gonna build. Exactly. <laughs> that's correct. That's, that's yeah. correct. Uh, whether they can supersede it or right. get to it, and I think what's going to be interesting is the ones to watch out for, are not necessarily schools associated with Nike, because they already put in there that FAMU would be the premier school, so other Nike schools can push up to it, but they're not going to surpass it. But the rival nature that we talk about in the marketplace is going to be the Under Armour. Exactly. And those associated with that. The Adidas brand institutions and associated with that. Because now they're not going to look like they want to be left behind in terms of being able to do that. So to me, it's not so much in terms of understanding the Nike part. It's the other rival apparel companies that associate with HBCUs and how they're going to try to counter and counteract this. And who yeah. they're going to use to be their brand institution when I talk the marketing, about. the marketing pre precedent that it set. Correct. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And so with that, um, quickly, the women's poll ranking did not change this week, really, in terms of the top team. Jackson State, as she got, as they got it done. But there was a change on the men's side. So I want to at least tease that out as we are top of it now. So we're going to close out and get a chance to go a little deeper dive on the football on Thursday. But I will release the poll today just to give people some uh, rankings, as I teased that earlier in terms of where those schools would be. Texas Southern this week is the new number one team in the men's poll. So um, dropping out this week is North Carolina a and State Aggies, 11 and 10, 71. You're talking about a tough break. Now we're finding out that there was a pop, false positive in terms of that test. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of how the world goes in this so many different ways. And so number five is Morgan State Bears. Um, in terms of them uh, jumping into the poll after uh, getting it done in a lot of ways, uh, going to the championship game in the MEAC on the men's side. Number four uh, is 
Jackson State, they fall from the two spot to number four. The number three, you have Norfolk State Spartans. Um, they move up from the five spot. And you have the number two, Prairie View A&M Panthers, um, fall from the number one spot. And number one is Texas Southern Tigers. We move all the way up from the fourth spot, uh, getting it done in different ways. And so that's that poll ranking. I did want to give you, in terms of the football poll ranking in week three, one team jumping into the poll as Delaware State fell out. They lost to South Carolina. Sunday, you can go check that out. Analysis as we gave you fresh off the look, but we'll start looking forward in terms of this weekend's game, uh, breaking down that even a little more. Number five is South Carolina State. At one and one, they were not ranked. They jump in at football. At number four, you have Arkansas Pine Bluff, one and oh. Uh, they remain at number four. At number three, Prairie a and Panthers, two and oh. Two first place vote, although they reign, r- remain at number three, they add a first place vote. You have Alabama AM, one and oh. Um, they uh, add a first place vote, although they fall. Um, excuse me, they lose two first place votes, they fall. The new number one team this week is Jackson State Tigers, 3-0, six first place vote, moving up one spot from number two. It's going to be interesting. It's very early, so it's very fluid. Um, but Jackson State has been the benefit of being able to play uh, three games, having that early game, even though they had one game canceled. Um, they're ahead of most people just in terms of the number of games, and obviously they won them all. So it's going to be interesting to see if teams are able to catch up and play more games, what that looks like, what that means. We're out of time, time, so we're going to tease this up and let you all listen to what uh, Mike and Charles have to say about the poll rankings. Tune in Thursday so you can see what they're going to say because you know they're going to have something to say about the basketball poll on the men's side. They might even have something to say about the women's poll because we'll break that down. And we'll get into the basketball games that will be played that day, um, um, that evening. Uh, we would have one right in the middle or close to the end of that game with uh, Texas Southern, and we'll lead you into the Norfolk State. So stick around and talk to us about that. So wanted to give you a little information there in terms of what's going on. As I know these folks are going to tease out so much, I can't wait to see what Mike and Charles have to say about my poll rankings, and I purposely made sure there was no more time. So y'all <laughs> said, set me up this week. And I want to see what people out there are saying uh, in my poll about my polls, what they think before I can get y'all in doing some so much. Y'all, yeah. you get to going and then they start to thinking. Well, let's go. Thank you for listening to Inside HBC Sports Lab. Make sure you share our podcast with your friends and colleagues. I am Dr. Kenyatta Cabill, the Dean of HBC Sports with Mike Watson and Charles Bishop. And I hope you enjoyed our interview with the Vice President and Director of Athletics, Courtney Gauthier of Florida a and University talking about the new apparel deal with Nike, LeBron James, and FAMU. Again, we want to thank you for listening to Dr. Cavill's Inside the HBCU Sports Lab with Mike Washington Charles Bishop every Tuesday at 6 o'clock right here. Again, if you're interested in uh, the caps, uh, we have them coming for you, or the golf caps, the polo shirts, we have T-shirts coming. Just hit me up on Messenger so we can start making sure we collect uh, the right sizes and colors that we can give you in those natures, uh, in that nature, I should say. And again, uh, to Charles and Mike, yours is coming. So I took a little bit away, but I give a little something. We look forward to next week as we discuss the latest news on the lab. Follow me, Dr. Kenyatta Cavill, on Twitter, Facebook, uh, Instagram, Dream Big. Continue to move forward. We will talk with you soon. Charles? Of course. Mike? Lecture. Dismissed. Yeah. I love my HBCU And boy, boy. I love it, love it yeah. I love it, love it yeah. I love my HBCU yeah. And man yeah. I hope my team they won one yeah. I hope my team they won one yeah. man. I hope my team they won one yeah. I hope my team they won one yeah. 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 I tune into the 